Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop Cardboard Coat Check. I am Mo Tuzano of the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, working with you to make your game nights better. Tonight, what I'm hoping to inform you of is exactly what you get in the box with this. This is one of the new small box Valeria games from Daily Magic Games. Um, Valeria Card Kingdoms is the game that kind of set this. This company kind of got their legs and put out a bunch of games in that series. And I love everything Valeria I played so far. This is some of the latest stuff. Now, people should just be getting these in their hands right around now. I'm from the original Kickstarter, and they should be hitting retail before the end of 2022, which I'm not sure when you're seeing this, if it's before or after 2022, but if it's after 2022, you should definitely be able to get these in 2023. Should be on store shelves. So this is from a good friend of ours, uh, Glenn Flaherty is the designer of this, working with Daily Magic Games to produce a solo, single-player Valeria game. And I gotta say, it looks pretty cool. Now, I have not played this, I haven't actually opened up my copy, but I know Glenn and he was sharing information on how he was designing it and everything else. But what we're here to do today, I'm not going to teach you how to play or anything like that. I just want to open up my copy and show off what you get in the box, the component quality, and of course, some awesome artwork by the Miko, which is what you get with every, uh, well, not every daily magic game but an awful lot of them so one thing i do have to note is daily magic games uh glenn himself actually sent us review copy of this so this is a review copy we didn't purchase our, ourselves so full disclosure there so let's crack this baby open and see what we get so first thing we're gonna do is get rid of the shrink wrap off this so here we have a shiny new copy glenn flaherty miko artwork daily magic Games, siege of valeria i'm just going to take a quick look at the different size so you can see right here this is for one player uh, you know what, i got to flip that over, I can't read it this way. Age 14 plus, uh, time 30 to 45 minutes. So again, not a lot to see on the edges here. Though I do like that the, the this side is actually done so you can store the game this way. Whereas this side is done so you can store the game this way. I think that's brilliant. I think more game companies need to start doing that. I think it's cool. Uh, so, let's take a look. Getting into the Kingdom of Valeria is difficult. That's because this is a tower defense game. Uh, we're going to keep the lid kind of off to the side here. So we get our rule book with a list of components, the story that is going on. We're going to flip through this quickly. It looks like a, it looks like a Daily Magic Games rule book. There is a certain style and aesthetic to them with columns, with lots of icons and color coding. This looks like one of their games. Shows the game being set up here. It looks like we're going to have a board and a bunch of different uh, grid of cards. These are the monsters attacking, and you're defending the walls. Supposedly, you are the last bastion of hope for the Kingdom of Valeria, the last thing you're going through. Kind of goes through the game flow. Um, I have always been impressed by their rule books. I like their larger. They use a slightly larger font than most other publishers. They do nice things that call out um, alternate rules or things to highlight. It's done really well. Uh, there should be an icon list at some point. I'm expecting as we keep flipping through. Uh, you got winning and losing. The various champions, they always do this. So once we're into this section, all it's doing is explaining the different abilities of the champions you can put in place. So the actual rules clock in at 10 pages, which isn't light for a solar player game. Um, then we have the siege engines, troops, uh, troop cards, event cards, event cards. So literally all this is just reference. So if one of the cards doesn't make sense to you, you can look it up and get a full clarification. Again, lots of iconography, a uh, quick play reference here. And important concepts. Interestingly, there is not a big reference list of icons. I'm expecting expected that from Valeria. So then we get to the actual components. And Valeria is known for using the same components in all of their games, which I actually appreciate. So mana is blue in all of their games. And the other thing they do with mana in all their games is it works as a resource on its own, as well as being wild. And that's the same thing in this game. It is blue is a resource on its own, and it can be added to strength. So this is the same blue resource you're going to find in Blurry Card Kingdom. Something I really appreciate with the company by sticking to that standard. This color blue with that shape is mana, which is a wild card. The other one we're going to find is strength, which look like shields. Same deal. The red, they look shaped like shields, which definitely having two distinct shapes is a nice thing for accessibility. And they count for strength. Now what I haven't, I don't remember seeing in any of the Valeria games I have are these which are little flame tokens. These you're going to put on your castle as it gets damaged. I gotta say, those, that's a nice component. That's a nice, it looks like flame. Again, you now have a third color and a very distinct shape. So 
props to Daily Magic for that one. The other thing I have in here is a the the soap <laughs> silica gel pack, which I'm not going to worry about. I'm going to keep this baggie out of the box for now. I don't need that. Then we're going to move on to dice. They're dice. They're D6 dice. They're red and blue D6 dice. You'll never guess. Red generates strength. Blue generates mana. What's cool is these look like standard dice. They're actually not. The pips there are actually the shields for strength. Oh, that was a nice touch because they look like standard dice, but they're not quite. By being like standard dice, they're really easy to read. And of course, the blue has the triagonal, tri, tri, triangle, triangular, there's the word I'm looking for, triangular mana symbol on it. So I thought that was a nice touch because you, you open this up and you're like, oh, they're just a bunch of dice. They actually do have symbols on them to differentiate them. Next, we have a deck of cards. This is the, the Marauding Horde that's coming in to attack you. Luckily, you have champions you can hire. Actually, that one like, might be a bad guy. And then we have a board. So, trough insert, obviously designed for keeping everything safe and getting it to us undamaged. Not going to be the best insert for storing this game after the fact. Though I gotta say, it fits the board nice. I don't know. I'll, I'll probably toss in an extra baggie for these two parts. Maybe I'll ditch the insert. But you know it's serviceable. Let's take a look at these cards first. And so to not be too distracting, we're just gonna try to open this up. Alright, here we go. So, we have Siege Engines. Whole bunch of Siege Engines. These are the horrible, terrible things that if they hit your walls, game's over. These are going to start at the back whirl and start moving up. And then they're, when they're in certain ranges, they're going to attack and you can defeat them. So again, Miko art. Um, it looks like the art duplicates, but all it is, there's multiple copies of some of the cards. So there's two ballistas. There are two battering rams. There are two, um, I can't even read that, breach towers and so on. Bottom is what you get if you defeat this. The card goes into your hand and you can spend it. Then we just have a bunch of different baddies each which generate resources for you, give you a special ability, and require various amounts of magic and strength to defeat. And as usual for Valeria, you can add the magic to your strength because it's a wild card. So again, fancy, awesome Miko artwork. Love that. I think that looks great. Goblin Warriors is a bunch of them. Whole bunch of different monsters. All the ones with the strength symbol on the top just need strength to beat. The ones with mana do require some magic to beat. There are more strength than mana. So that's the monster cards, which you're going to put out in a grid, attacking your castle. Which, here is the castle. It's a nice, simple player board. You set it up. I'm not going to set up a full board, and you'd have rows of these cards in front of you. There's little spots to put the flames. Once you put down the third flame, fourth flame, you can't, uh, you can't put heroes there anymore and it kills any heroes that are there board nah, it's going to take a bit to get flat i don't know if you can see that it does not really want to lay flat i don't want to bend it back too much but i might want to throw that under something heavy for a little bit next we move on to champions and here's where i'm going to wish i had a baggie because this is just going to go in here and kind of slide all over so these are champions that you can earn during the game that you're going to put into these different spots and they're going to give you abilities for fighting the enemies. And again, we're stuck in some shrink wrap. So we try to get this open. There we go. So a bunch of champions and events. So these are generally terrible things that are happening to you or, or beneficial things for trying to get through it. So this is the event deck. Recommended first time you play, you don't use the event deck. And there's a bunch of different abilities. No artwork on these, but nice, clear, easy to read text. You get a summary card that kind of walks you through the rules and how to play. And I got to say, for the thickness of the rule book, that's a nice, concise summary card. I will admit, I wish these were bigger. That is a tiny, tiny font. And then you have champions you can get, and they have a special ability. So, again, awesome Miko artwork. I love that one. That's a great one. Various champions. And again, champions would get played here, and they'd help with that particular row. So that's it. That's what you get with a copy of Siege of Valeria. A solo game in the Valeria universe. Done deal.
So there you have what you get in the box for Siege of Valeria, one of the latest Valeria games from Daily Magic Games. A solo um, tower defense game. You're rolling dice to try to defeat waves of bad guys, followed by siege engines. More bad guys come in. You just got to get past wave after wave and survive until the end. And you were the last defense. So I don't own very many solo games. So I'm looking forward to trying this one out. I have played Shadow Kingdoms of Valeria solo and I enjoyed that. Um, I do generally enjoy um, Daily Magic games and Valeria games. So I'm looking forward to trying this one out. So that is Siege of Valeria, again, from Daily Magic Games. Now, if you want to hear my thoughts on this one, or you want to see what's going on with this, now that I've got it unboxed, and I'm going to have to sit down and read the rules, and I start playing it, I'll be talking about that on social media, all the usual places, Twitter, Instagram, Mastodon on Dice Camp, um, Facebook, you know, all those places, Tumblr now. And I'll be doing all that under Tabletop Bellhop One Word. So Tabletop Bellhop One Word on all social media. I'll also be sharing information, eventually a written review on our blog, tabletopbellhop.com, and we'll be talking about it on the Tabletop Bellhop Gaming Podcast, which I invite you to subscribe to on your podcatcher of choice. That's it for my unboxing of Siege of Valeria. Good day, and game on.